Jeanette Armstrong, so wonderful to have you here with us for this discussion on the living earth. We'd love to have you tell us a little bit about what that term means and something of the work you have been doing. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. Um, it was such a rich conversation, and, and the work that you do is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So um, one of the uh, reasons that I decided that it was important that I come, I'm really selective about where I go and, and talk. So one of the reasons I think is uh, that the work that I've been involved in has been to try to bring understanding about um, my indigenous seal Okanagan way of thinking about how to bring understanding that the earth is a living entity, a living thing, and that um, the idea of that isn't isn't uh, understood well in terms of uh, the <clears throat> the science community, the academic community, and I think the need for that is um, incredibly important. Um, so bringing my indigenous perspective about it helps that conversation uh, grow in terms of what's needed on on the earth for us to relate better uh, to. The, the whole of the living earth. Right. So we need it in these times especially. Um, why and how did we forget this, do you think? Well, I'm not sure how we forgot it. Um, <laughs> our people, for the most part, didn't forget right. it. Right, right. Um, because they're still very much engaged in the reverence yeah. that accompanies that understanding, yeah. that the idea of reverence, not so much in the idea of dogma or or ritual even, but reverence in terms of the knowledge that this greater life force that uh, is is around us, that we're that we are a part of, we in our language call it tmih, that the tmih, that we're we are as well, um, is a force that's continuously uh, maintaining itself and can continuously sustaining itself and rebalancing itself uh, continuously and I think in a more intelligent way than than we can imagine um, the intelligence that surrounds us right yeah. um, and I'm not thinking about human intelligence I'm thinking about design intelligence and the patterns that that uh, evolved and exist have uh, been perfected and honed over over so much time to bring us here mm -hmm. yes and i think that idea is what we're grappling with at this time and why it's so important for the human to take that place in that context exactly you made a wonderful comment um and it is true my question is like why did we of the western white world forget it you know um, and the fact that indigenous peoples around the world, and especially in your part of the world, in uh, British Columbia and First Nations people, have held this for mm -hmm. so long against great difficulty and opposition mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. You made a wonderful comment among many at this conference where you said the ethics are actually in these systems themselves, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's we who have to figure out an ethics where mm -hmm. we belong again. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little more about that? I think the the idea for me of ethics is part of my study, part of my PhD research, um, has really a lot to do with how we think about the human as separate somehow mm -hmm. from the rest of the life force that we are actually integral and part of. Mm -hmm. And I say integral because the human mind has its own reason to be, just as fish or birds or insects have different reasons to be in that living system and different uh, modes of, of being part of that living system in the intelligence of diversity, mm -hmm. right? Uh, right? All the separate things that the human is finding its place. And according to our, our knowledge and our stories that the human is the least intelligent of all 
the rest of the life forms that surround us, the Tamihu that surround us, and they can instruct us in terms of how to create that interdependency, that balance, that reciprocity that exists in every place right. among them, in all the forms that it exists in, and that we as humans need to find a way to be part of that right. reciprocity so that the living the earth can be healthy and live, and right. then we are healthy and right. live. And as you said, this is held in your stories and your mm -hmm. traditions and your rituals, mm -hmm. and especially in your ceremonies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Tell us how ceremonies ground mm -hmm. this worldview in, mm -hmm. in communities. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this symbol that I'm wearing, just by chance yeah. today, yeah. Um, is, is a symbol uh, that uh, is one of our foundational stories, the foundation of how we as human beings need to be able to work together in reciprocity and work together in bringing about new understanding continuously so that we're, we are knowledgeable in what we do and we are um, helpful in terms of our, our own life force continuing, sustaining ourselves, but helpful in a way that is mindful mm -hmm. of all of the other relatives that are there taking care of us. And when I say taking care of us, uh, gifting us with life, mm -hmm. gifting us with the things that we eat, whether it's a plant or whether it's a, you know, whether it's a, a bird or whether it's a fish or whether it's a, an animal or it's a mushroom, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all of those things that are gifted to us um, are equal in their interdependent role. There isn't a hierarchy in our view, mm -hmm. and we're not in that hierarchy either. We're, we're equal with everything else in terms of the things that we need to survive come from them. Mm -hmm. Whether you plant it or whether you harvest it, whether you pick it or whether you take it out of the water or mm -hmm. whether you, you, you need to go out and hunt for 10 days and bring back food for your family, mm -hmm. as many indigenous peoples do, mm -hmm. that idea isn't just to feed the the physical life form for our people. This story tells us that when we make decisions, every decision the human makes can disrupt and can be damaging. And so there's a word for that. We can become like people eaters and eat the other people up. Mm -hmm. Or we can become like them in which we find our balance and we live in reciprocity. And this mechanism is a way to bring people to that way of discussing that and including uh, all of the other relatives in how we make decisions. That's called an Alkan Wih. So the center that I was instrumental in founding is to bring that forward back to our people after the years of trying to erase it and through the colonizing process, mm -hmm. education process. Um, but to bring it back to our people in a good way and to share that with the rest of the world that needs new ways of doing things. Otherwise, we're going to keep on having problems. Yeah. So it's, a, it's more like, here's an idea. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. <laughs> but here it is, you yeah. know, and... and Let's, let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, so much more to talk about, but we really want to thank you for your center, mm -hmm. your work, the traditional ecological mm -hmm. knowledge, the food systems, and especially for being here. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, and I'm so excited about this you know, dialogue that we had this, this week, and thank you for that, and thank you for all the special people that were brought together for this. It was remarkable. It was. But Definitely. we're honored you were here, especially. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.